Coming up on today's show, rumors of vehicle-to-grid capabilities hidden in current production Teslas get debunked, but that doesn't mean we won't see it in the future. General Motors provides more information on the forward compatibility of the Altium battery system, and Google says it's swearing off using AI to help the fossil fuel industry. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation. We're certainly not back to any level of normalcy yet, but I hope that wherever things are and wherever you are, you can sit down with me for a bit to catch up on the latest news. Thanks to the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship of today's show. Find out how to join them and accelerate the switch to electric by going to electricauto.org. We start today's show with claims made earlier this week that Tesla had started putting power circuitry inside its Model 3 and thereby Model Y that would allow AC vehicle-to-grid capabilities down the line. The claims came from a European software engineer who had taken a Tesla charger apart. The story broke early in the week and several news outlets ran with it. But Phil Sado, aka Engineerix on YouTube, showed midweek that on a 2018 Tesla Model 3 board, at least power was only capable of traveling one way, not both. We made a video on his discoveries and while there have been many arguing the opposite, stating that we're basing our analysis on old tech, I should note that the diagram published with the original story was also dated 2018. V2G may happen in the future, but not as far as we can tell right now. And even then, it'll probably only use high voltage DC connections, as some of Tesla's software seems to allude to. Back in March, General Motors unveiled the new Altium battery system it had designed for future BEV3 platform electric vehicles, including the upcoming Hummer EV and Cadillac Lyric EV. At that event, GM did detail some of the features of the new battery system, but this week it held a call with journalists that went far more in depth. During the call, we were told about how GM's new battery technology uses a series of smart modules, each with their own wireless battery management system, cooling and battery cells. These modules are then placed together to form whatever battery pack capability is required. GM has developed this system to be forward compatible, meaning owners of vehicles will be able to replace battery modules as and when required with the latest technology. It's all pretty clever stuff. As countries around the world slowly return to normal, at least something approaching normal, the team at Rimac Automobili in Croatia have been resuming their hard work getting the upcoming Rimac C2 supercar ready for series production. That means new episodes of the now standard Mondays with Mate on the firm's YouTube channel. Uh, that's Mate Rimac, founder of the company. The last two episodes have not only given us a sneak peek of how testing of the C2 is progressing, by getting a ride along with the company's test driver, but also see a deep dive into the super high power inverter at the heart of the more than one megawatt power electronics that gives the C2 its insane performance. You should watch, they're definitely worth watching. Volkswagen has announced this week that it's got buy-in from all of its German dealerships concerning the way in which its ID family of electric vehicles will be sold. Rather than have the dealerships be the primary initial point of contact for customers, Volkswagen says its new ID sales model will see customers place orders for the ID online, with customers buying their cars directly from the automaker. Volkswagen will also take control of all of financing concerns for ID vehicles without any dealer input. The dealers, meanwhile, will provide test drives, assist with servicing and take care of final vehicle handover. It's a smart move in terms of sales as it will help eliminate dealer misinformation. But in a week where Volkswagen published an overtly racist social media campaign, well, it is the least of the company's worries right now. At least, I'd suggest so. 
Tesla has now successfully reopened its Fremont production facility and midweek sent an email to employees recalling them all to work. With the facility now back to full staff operation, Tesla has also dropped the legal case against Alameda County it had been threatening. While Tesla had previously said that employees who felt unsafe returning to work would be able to stay at home with no pay, Tesla has now reinstated its attendance policy, which means staff can only stay home on unpaid leave with zero consequences if they believe they may expose an at-risk family member to COVID-19. While staff are happy to be back at work, some have also expressed concerns anonymously to various outlets about the tight working conditions and concern that physical distancing guidelines are not being fully followed, although masks are now said to be provided and worker temperatures are being taken as they enter the building. Volvo has released a new walk-around video for the upcoming XC40 Recharge electric SUV, giving customers a little more eye candy before deliveries start later this year. The video features four of the team responsible for designing and building the XC40 and covers everything from design elements through to its load carrying and towing capabilities, location of emergency equipment, charging and telematics, and even individual configuration options for the driver's information display and Google-based touchscreen navigation system. It's really very in-depth, but it is the only time I've ever seen an automaker go to great lengths to sell the various features of the product without making excuses because it's electric. Frankly, I would love to see more companies make customer-focused deep dive videos like this. I think it would do a lot of good. Tesla has reportedly been visiting a number of sites recently in the US with a view to choosing a place to build its promised Tesla Terra Factory. The facility will be home to Tesla's Cybertruck as well as Model Y and potentially other models too. While Tesla hasn't confirmed exactly where this Terra Factory will be built, the leading favourite right now is this site to the northeast of Austin, Texas. Thanks to Smart Charge America, we got some photos of the site early on in the week, and then Brian Rosetsky from Rosetsky Photography reached out at the end of the week and offered us this fabulous drone footage over the same site. With a railroad logistics site adjacent to the facility, it certainly looks perfect for a large automotive production part. But with no contracts signed right now, it's really a little up in the air as to exactly where the final facility will be. Watch this space and thanks to Brian for the video. Software giant Google has put its artificial intelligence systems to all kinds of uses over the years, from helping it advance autonomous driving tech to finding exoplanets and detecting breast cancer with a better accuracy than the human eye. But it's also been used over the years to help oil and gas companies continue to search for and then extract fossil fuels from the earth, with Amazon, Microsoft and Google all guilty of helping big oil continue to exploit the planet. This week, however, in response to a new Greenpeace report which highlighted the part all three companies play in the oil and gas industry, Google said that it would no longer, quote, build custom artificial intelligence, machine learning algorithms to facilitate upstream extraction of the oil and gas industry. Neither Amazon nor Microsoft made any overtures to exiting the segment. And now it's time for short shorts. Tesla has announced another increase in price to its full self-driving for customers' cars. Although Tesla still hasn't met its promises of delivering full self-driving, the price of specking a car with full self-driving at the point of purchase will be $8,000, up $1,000 previously. The price increases go into effect in July. BMW has confirmed that it will begin production of the iX3 all-electric SUV this summer, as planned. Concern had been expressed by some that the car would be pushed back due to COVID-19, but BMW says the planned launch in China will go on ahead on schedule. European Ford Mustang Mark E customers have received communication from Ford stating their cars will be delayed until next year due to COVID-19. Ford North America, meanwhile, has said US market launch plans will continue this year according to plan. Ultium LLC, that's the company co-owned by General Motors and its battery partner LG Chem, has begun to prepare the ground for construction of an all-new battery facility in Lordstown, Ohio. It will produce upwards of 30 gigawatt hours of battery cells for EVs per year. 
According to paperwork filed with the relevant authorities, Tesla is preparing to install more production line robots at its Fremont production facility. They'll likely ultimately speed up the production line process, but likely at the expense of human jobs. Sono Motors has published a blog post this week detailing the intricacies of the electronic system it will be using to maximize charging capabilities on the upcoming Scion electric car. Because the Scion EV has solar panels on every surface, the system is very different to what you might find on the roof of your home controlling panels there. Panasonic says it's in talks with Tesla about expanding the Tesla Giga Nevada to produce more lithium-ion cells. The news comes as a shock if you've been following the less-than-rosy relationship the two companies have had this year. But Panasonic says it's all good now and the facility is operating at a profit. General Motors has teased yet another short video of the upcoming GMC Hummer EV pickup truck. This time, the video focuses on the truck's full-length glass roof and seems to suggest that the Hummer EV will be less military in its design aesthetic than its ancestors. Battery specialist Northvolt has unveiled a brand new mobile energy storage product called the Volt Pack. Developed in partnership with Vattenfall, it can deliver up to 250 kilowatts of instantaneous power and can scale in its storage capacities to up to 1.5 gigawatt hours of energy. A company called QReal has published a video demonstrating the semi-automatic charge cable system it's hoping to kickstart in the near future. The idea is that the cable will drop down automatically when it sees your car and is ready to go when you're ready to plug in. But frankly, it seems overly complicated for such a simple action. Jaguar Land Rover has confirmed that it will be bringing electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles to its Special Vehicle Operations Division. And if you don't know what that is, it's Jaguar Land Rover's performance and bespoke arm, where if you have to ask the price, you probably can't afford it. As China heads back to work following COVID-19 lockdowns, cities are reporting some of the worst pollution and traffic they've experienced in their history. The reason? People are wary of taking public transit and thus more people are driving than would normally do, hence the much worse air quality. The European Union is considering a new rule that would make electric vehicles exempt from all sales tax in all member states. Since sales tax sits at around 20% on average, it could be a great EV incentive, although it won't happen in the UK because, well, we know what happened there. Jaguar has officially cancelled the iPACE eTrophy race series after just two years, despite being signed up for a third year of racing. High costs and the coronavirus are primarily to blame. While fun, the series never truly took off. Nissan's first all-electric ambulance has begun service in Tokyo. Part of the Zero Emission Tokyo Initiative, the ambulance, based on an electrified Nissan NV400, will be put into service with the Tokyo Fire Department. The latest analysis from Bloomberg New Energy Finance predicts that electric vehicle sales will fall by about 18% this year, primarily in response to coronavirus. Long term, however, it says previous predictions about market share remain pretty accurate. James Dyson has been talking about the car his firm had been working on until recently when it was cancelled. He claims that it would have offered a 600-mile range and 4.8-second sprint time. Given the SUV was cancelled, it seems bizarre to tout what it would have done after it's been canned. Fiat Chrysler has begun work on a massive vehicle-to-grid product at the Maria Ferrari production plant, where it's all-new, all-electric Fiat 500 is being built. It will feature 64 bi-directional DC quick charging stations and be the largest V2G project of its kind. Volkswagen has confirmed that its R division, known for high-performance cars like the pretty famous Golf R32, will follow other high-performance brands from other automakers and become an all-electric flagship for the firm. ID3R, anyone? Southern California Edison is in the early stages of launching a demonstration vehicle-to-grid project to see if V2G could help lower customers' bills in exchange for using their electric vehicles as a battery storage. We'll bring you more when we know more, as usual. Nissan is getting ready to cut 20,000 jobs around the world. With its Sunderland facility in the UK and its Barcelona facility in Spain, both of which make EVs likely to be severely hit. 
it's not clear what the impact will be on future EVs. And those are your short shots. There'll be more next week. Chinese firm S-Volt has hosted the launch of its new cobalt-free lithium-ion battery cell, which it says is now entering into production. S-Volt is a spin-off of Great Wall Motors in China. It says the new cobalt-free batteries have a longer cell life, higher energy density, and are a lot safer than cells containing cobalt. To demonstrate the capabilities of the new chemistry, it's been working with its parent company, Great Wall Motors, to use the new L6 cobalt-free long cell battery in one of Great Wall Motors' high-end models. It claims a range of up to 880 kilometers should be possible with this new pack chemistry in use. At the moment, I do have very limited information about this car and the launch, but I'm hoping to cover it more comprehensively soon to see if the battery stands up to the claims made of it. And finally, convertibles are fun. I've owned a soft top before and most car people I know have at some point or other owned some form of drop top in order to enjoy a bit of summer driving along country lanes. But not all vehicles work as convertibles and not all cars should be made into a convertible. Yet Newport Commercial Engineering, a California firm well known for chopping the roof off everything, literally from a Ford F-150 to a Bentley and yes, a Tesla Model S, has just published photographs of its first Tesla Model 3 convertible. You too could have a Tesla Model 3 converted by the company, but should you wish, that cost is going to be expensive. Rumors are that it's an eye-watering 30,000 US dollars. I'm sure beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but honestly, this Model 3 is one car I would rather not see with the roof down. And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's video. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric cars and renewable energy today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator, find local monthly meetups to attend, either in person or virtually, and find other EV owners to talk about making the switch to electric by going to electricauto.org. I'd also like to tell you about the National E-Mobility Equity Town Hall that EV Noir and Forth are co-hosting on May 28th from 11 a.m. Pacific to 2 p.m. The whole conference, which is going to focus on different facets of the e-mobility equity ecosystem, is completely free to attend and it's taking place online via Zoom. If you're interested in an electric vehicle future that's open to all members of your community, then this is a conference you won't want to miss out. You'll find the registration link below and I hope to be there too. We'd love it if you'd like, comment and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you feel able to, please consider supporting us using the links below. As you probably know by now, we have cut back on our spending in order to weather the storm and keep this business afloat, which means that we are getting rid of our studio in July. But like many content creators, we are starting to feel the pinch of the impending coronavirus recession. If you can, we're always grateful for your support in whatever way you can offer it. And that also includes making sure you watch the ads, share our stuff and engage with us on social media because that all helps the algorithms and helps keeping eyeballs coming to the site. Don't forget we've moved our Take Two Hangouts to midweek. Wednesdays are usually when we do it. We did this one last week, but you can catch me tomorrow racing in Forza with the rest of the awesome folks at Plugin Racing. I will be there this weekend. Go to pluginracing.com and see the fun and watch me come in last because that's what I do. I'll be back soon with another show very soon. So thanks for joining me. Stay safe, wash your hands, and as always, keep evolving.